So what is it like to work at Aspen Dental as a dentist? Does it ever make sense to work at a corporate office like Aspen, Pacific, or Heartland? If you as a dentist are serious about making real money and taking control of your career, no question, being a practice owner is smarter than working at a corporate office like Aspen Dental. However, sometimes there are times where it makes sense to work as an associate dentist. There is a way to use the DSOs for your advantage rather than being taken advantage of. I have personally worked at Aspen Dental and I am going to share with you some tips and strategies to make sure that when you're working as an associate for a DSO, you are the one getting the best end of the deal. For my first year out of school, I worked as an associate. I've personally bought and sold multiple dental practices and in between buying and selling, there's been some times where I've wanted to have a little extra work and I've, I've done some temp work. And specifically, I did some temp work at Aspen Dental. Over the last few years, I've actually worked at seven to eight different Aspen Dental offices, totaling 50 to 60 days in total. So I have a pretty decent idea of what it's like to work at Aspen Dental at various different offices. I've also had the time to talk to a lot of different dentists and meet a lot of people who work at Aspen to get an idea of what they thought about it. If you're just starting out, working at a DSO like Aspen Dental is probably one of the smartest things you can do. You're going to go from seeing two to three patients a day at dental school to seeing 40, 50 patients a day at a place like Aspen. Working at a DSO is actually a pretty good place to get exposed to a lot of different types of patients and get to do a lot of different types of procedures. And also if you're in a transition period, maybe you're moving, maybe you just sold a dental practice, maybe you're about to buy a dental practice, temping at a place like Aspen can be a great way to make a little bit of extra money and fill in some time. Aspen has over a thousand offices and technically each office is owned by a dentist and Aspen is a dental service organization that manages the businesses However, in practice, Aspen owns these offices. Now, I know a dentist who owns, I think, nine or 10 Aspen offices, and she does pretty well. I don't know exactly how much she makes, but I think she does pretty well. But she has a lot of work managing nine to 10 different offices, and they're spread out over a pretty large geographical area. So she does a lot of driving between the offices. And honestly, I know some dentists who are probably making a lot more than she is, and they're just having to work at one office. It, it seems like a pretty difficult way to make money, but hey, it, it, it is a potential way to make money is if you own nine to 10 of these offices. Now, I would be extremely hesitant about any type of offer from an organization like Aspen or any other DSO where they offer you partial equity. This is just not ownership. What it is, is it's a retention tactic where they make it more difficult for you to leave because you technically own part of the business. But in reality, you don't actually own something that you can sell freely on the market. There's usually a contract that you sign that you agree to sell the 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 piece back to the DSO at a predetermined price. And it's not really valuable to you. It's just a way of trying to keep you at the office, some sort of retention tactic that I would absolutely stay away from. Now, if you're a dentist and you're working at Aspen, you're gonna be doing a lot of extractions. The types of patients that come to Aspen are generally patients that have not been to the dentist in five, 10, 15, sometimes 20 years. And they will come in with a lot of decay, a lot of periodontal disease. And oftentimes the treatment plan is, well, we need to extract and do upper and lower dentures. A big part of Aspen Dental's business is after doing the extractions and the dentures, you then try to convince the patients to do implants. And so Aspen has a pretty decent training program for their associate dentists to learn how to place implants. And then you'll actually get quite a bit of experience treatment planning implants and a certain percentage of the patients that you do dentures on will also want to do implants. Most dentists at Aspen are going to do something like 20 dentures in an average week and two to three implants. So you're going to be spending a lot more time with extractions and dentures, but you still will be doing some implants. Now, one of the good things about working for Aspen rather than working for a place like affordable dentures and implants is that at Aspen, you'll also still be doing some general dentistry. While a big portion is going to be extractions, you're also going to be doing some fillings and crowns, maybe veneers, uh, maybe some endo. I personally like to refer most of my endo out but there are some dentists that are doing endo at Aspen. And then finally at Aspen, you are going to be doing a lot of treatment planning. And I mean a lot of treatment planning. Aspen's whole plan is that they bring in new patients. They do 
they do a ton of advertising and they get new patients to come in. And so your job is going to be doing comprehensive exams on lots and lots of patients. It is not uncommon at, at an Aspen Dental to have 10 to 15 new patients each day. And these are not your run-of-the-mill, simple new patients. These are patients that have not been to the dentist in 10 years, and they are often coming in like a train wreck. There's so many things to treatment plan. You are going to be spending an enormous amount of time treatment planning. And honestly, that is a very good skill to have. Probably the number one thing that sets aside a mediocre dentist from an excellent dentist is that the excellent dentist knows how to treatment plan properly. Comprehensive treatment planning means you're writing down everything you see and you're making sure to treatment plan the best possible procedures for these patients. I see a lot of new dentists make the mistake where they're afraid to treatment plan crowns and more expensive procedures because they're worried about what it's going to cost the patient. But what happens is they end up providing subpar quality procedures by trying to save the patient some money. Stay away from that. If a patient comes in and a tooth needs a crown, treatment plan a crown. Don't try to do an MOBL filling. If a tooth is missing a cusp, if there's decay, ramp it on this tooth. If there's decay that's spread to the lingual and the buccal, just do the crown. Don't try to treatment plan some giant composite restoration. Now, because Aspen Dental gets a large number of new patients that haven't been to the dentist in a long time, you tend to get a lot of patients that have periodontal disease. This is honestly one of the most frustrating parts of working at Aspen. A big part of Aspen's business model is to incentivize the hygienist to do as many SRPs as possible. Now, let me be clear. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. These patients really do need SRPs. However, it makes it difficult because the patients think they're coming in for a cleaning and then we're scheduling them for an SRP. In addition to charging for the SRP, Aspen also usually tries to add on an electric toothbrush, chlorhexidine rinses and chips, and other types of add-on procedures that can make it even more expensive for the patient. And it can be kind of confusing when the office manager at the front doesn't really understand the procedures and is, is making it seem as if the patient has to buy this expensive electric toothbrush and things. It, some, their business model just makes it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, and they're doing it because they want to make more money, but it makes it more difficult for you as the dentist because oftentimes you have to come in and explain to the patient why they need the scaling and and how getting this electric toothbrush would benefit them, but they don't have to get it, and the patient is upset that it's, it's really expensive, and it, it makes things a little bit more complicated. And so that is one of the frustrations of working at Aspen. Another issue related to this is that Aspen Dental's philosophy is that patients come in and they see the hygienist and then the hygienist leaves the room and goes to get their next patient and then leaves the patient in the room for a check. And then you end up doing most of your your checks with no assistant or hygienist in the room to help you. And so you're scribbling things down on a piece of paper and it's, it's just, it makes it a lot more difficult than at most other offices where the hygienist stays in the room. I understand why they're doing things this way because they're trying to maximize the revenue from each employee. But from a dentist point of view, it's inconvenient to have to do hygiene checks by yourself. And that brings me on to my next point. Working as a dentist at a place like Aspen Dental, you are going to be treated with very low respect. When you work at a DSO like Aspen, basically you are deciding, I'm not good enough right now to own my own practice, so I'm going to stoop down and work at this office. Employees at the practice and the patients understand this, and so they do not treat you with the same type of respect that they would treat you if you were working at your own office. When you are working at an office that you're the owner, you are the one paying the employees, and so the employees have a respect for you that they're never gonna have when you're working at a DSO like Aspen. The way that the Aspen offices are set up, the office manager, which oftentimes is someone who's fairly new out of school because more experienced office managers are eventually gonna find higher paying jobs moving to a private practice. So the office managers that are at a place like Aspen are generally pretty young and they're basically the ones that are in charge of the office. This tends to result in a dynamic where the assistants are a lot less respectful towards the dentist. For instance, when I'm at one of my own practices, if I sit down with a patient, there is always an assistant that comes in and works with me. 
Dentists are the highest paid employee at any dental office and their time is the most valuable. It doesn't make sense for the dentist to be fumbling around looking for composite in the drawers and trying to find the right instruments. The assistants need to be in there to get those things ready so that the dentist can come in and get to work. In my experience working at DSOs like Aspen, oftentimes the assistants don't care that you're in the room. You have to actually go and get them and say, hey, can you please come and help me in the room? And they say, I'll do it when I get around to it. There's been times where I'll sit in a room with a patient for five, 10 minutes, just waiting for an assistant to get started. And it's not that I think I'm better than anyone else, but the reality is, is I have a lot of work to get to. I have three or four more patients that are coming up next after this patient, and I need to get started on this patient, but I can't get started because there's no assistant in the room. Another thing that is very different for me working at an office like Aspen is the note situation. When I'm at an office that I own, I never do notes. I have my assistants and the hygienists do the notes. That's why I'm paying them is to do the notes. Sometimes I'll go back in and you know add a little bit or edit things to the notes, but overall, they're the ones that are in charge of doing those notes. They're the ones that are spending the most time with patients. As a dentist, you're going from room to room to room, seeing you know maybe nine, 10 different patients in a single hour. It's, it's basically impossible for you to remember all those details. That's why you have an assistant that's there to write down those details and remember things and put them into the notes. At Aspen, their system is set up to where the dentists have to do each and every note. There have been times where I, as the dentist, have been one of the last people to leave the office because I'm sitting there after hours finishing notes while the hygienists and the assistants have all left to go home. The system that they have just doesn't make sense and clearly is not built upon respecting dentist time. Once again, it's not that I'm too good to do notes, but the fact is there's like five or six different assistants and they're bringing patients from room to room. They're the ones spending the majority of the time with those patients. At the end of the day, when I've seen 50, 60 patients, I don't remember all the details of what I've done with each of those patients. And so what ends up happening is I just have to put generic notes that don't actually make sense because I don't remember each and every patient. Now, I have seen some dentists at Aspen that tell their assistants to make notes and I had, have had some assistants that have helped with the notes, but the way that the system is set up at Aspen is that even when the assistants do the notes, you as a dentist still have to log in after the assistant finished the notes and you have to approve it. And while in some computer systems, that sounds like an easy task that should just take a few seconds, the way that the Aspen system is set up, it literally takes like longer to approve a note than it does just to do the note yourself. And the worst part is, if the assistants haven't finished a note, you have to go find the assistant and say, hey, can you finish this note so that I can approve it so that I can leave? And sometimes you're waiting multiple hours after closing, waiting for the assistants to finish notes so that you can then approve the notes. And then don't even get me started with the front desk and the office manager situation where there's certain types of procedures that they can't charge out once you finish a note. And so they'll have you go back into the system and undo your note so that they can do something. And then you have to redo your note. The whole system is just set up in a way where the dentist has to approve each and every little thing. And it's just very clear that whoever set up the computer systems at Aspen was not a dentist and was not taking a dentist into account. The overall lack of respect for dentists is built into the very culture of these DSOs. The very systems are set up to make money for shareholders, not to being accommodating to dentist time. It's possible that if you've only worked at Aspen, maybe you don't realize how poorly you're being treated. But once you've been the owner of a practice and you felt the difference in the way that the the staff and the patients treat you, the kind of respect you receive. When you go and you work at an office like Aspen, you realize how kind of humiliating and degrading it is to be an employee at one of these types of corporations. If you want to be treated with the respect that you've earned by becoming a dentist, then you're going to need to own your own practice. Now, another very frustrating thing about working at DSOs like Aspen is they generally pay their employees less than private practices do. This means that the experienced and smart assistants and hygienists have gone and gotten jobs other places. Oftentimes, the assistants, this is their first time working as an assistant. Many of them didn't even go to school to become an assistant, and they've just done on-the-job training, and many of them don't even have their radiograph certifications. The difference between working with an experienced assistant and an inexperienced assistant is huge. 
When I work with an experienced assistant, I can work two to three times faster than I can when I work with one of these inexperienced assistants that work at Aspen. Many of these assistants don't even know what an explorer is and they can't hand you the correct instruments. Working at Aspen, I literally spend more than half of my time with the patient just waiting for the assistant to find the right material to give me. I'll say, can you pass me the bond? And the assistant will say, I don't think we have that. This is a dental office. We have bond. You need to find it. Some of these assistants will take like 17 x-rays to try to get one PA. It's like, did you ever go to school to learn how to do this? No, I just have on-the-job training. Do you have your radiograph certification? I don't know what that is. That I mean, that's not to say all the assistants at Aspen are bad. Sometimes you'll have an assistant that's been there for a few years, but for the most part, the assistants are pretty new and inexperienced. Now, the pay at Aspen is decent, but not amazing. I do know a few dentists at Aspen who are making $300,000 to $350,000 a year, but in order to make that much money, they're having to work like dogs. I'm talking five days a week of working eight to five, being in the chair the entire time, doing procedure after procedure. The amount of work some of these dentists at Aspen do is just, to me, just kind of mind-blowing. I've told a few of them, like, Do you realize with the amount of work you're doing here at Aspen, if you were doing the same work at a private practice that you owned, you would probably be making more than a million dollars a year. You are seriously working so hard yet keeping so little of what you're making. However, with that being said, if if this is your first year out of school and you don't yet have a practice, working at a place like Aspen is going to be a way to see a lot of patients. You're not going to make as much money as you will when you're a private practice owner, but you can make enough money to save up some money so that you can then buy a practice. The typical way that associates are paid is they're paid a percentage of their production. Now, Aspen Dental does it a little bit differently where they try to pay you a percentage of the office production. Is it better or worse than being paid a percentage of your production? You know, it's it's hard to say. It's going to be a case-by-case basis. I will say that I have worked at a few offices where I was paid a percentage of my production, but there was another dentist that worked in the office and there was definitely some competition in a way between, you know, you see this patient, I'll see that patient because it's not fair if one dentist gets to see more patients than the other, et cetera. Cause you, you know, if you're getting paid a percentage of your own production, if the other dentist does work, then you're not going to get a percentage of that at Aspen, because you're paid a percentage of the total office production, it does foster a uh, environment where there's less competition and it's more of a teamwork effort to get the work done. And I do like that about Aspen. Another advantage is that Aspen often has specialists, uh, you know, they hire oral surgeons and endodontists and et cetera to come into the office sometimes. And if you refer to those in-house specialists and you're getting to keep a percentage of the total office production, then you're still going to get a cut of whatever the specialist is doing. Now, working for a DSO like Aspen can actually be a very good way to start out your career. For the first year, at max two years, it's a good way to get your speed up and learn some skills and save up some money and why you're trying to find your practice to buy. But I personally wouldn't want to work there for more than a year and like, definitely not more than two years because you are missing out on so much money by not owning your own practice. If I was coming out of school and I was going to take a job at a DSO, at the same time, I would be looking for a practice to buy. Oftentimes it can take a year or two once you start looking for a practice to buy to find the right practice. So don't wait until you want to be an owner to start looking. Start looking right away and just you don't know how long it's going to take to find that practice. So overall, I would say Aspen Dental is a good place to start out your career as a dentist. However, I would not stay there long. You're not going to be treated with the kind of respect you deserve. You're not going to be making the kind of money you deserve. You're not going to have the kind of freedom over your schedule that you're going to have when you become a practice owner, but it's a good way to start out. And if you're in between fields, maybe you just sold a practice, maybe you're moving to another city or whatever, and you need to take a temp job, Aspen can be a good way to take a few extra days, a few extra shifts while you're in a transition period. But remember, use DSOs like Aspen as a tool to achieve your goals. Do not become one of their tools that they're using to achieve their goals. Get in, Get the experience you need, get the money that you need, and then get out and buy a practice.